We're going to call this regular meeting of Erie County Council to order at 6.17 p.m. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, this evening, uh, Councilwoman Showerman is going to lead us in the optional prayer. Councilwoman Showerman. In a, society, in a society that has you counting money, pounds, calories, and steps, be a rebel and count your blessings instead. Thank you, Councilwoman Showerman. Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Clear? Here. Mr. Horton? Here. Mr. Rastetter? Here. Mrs. Rennie? Here. Mrs. Showerman? Here. Mr. Shank? Here. Chairman Anderson? Here. Uh, next, we'll have a hearing from the uh, public. Uh, as we always state, if somebody has uh, called in in time to be on the agenda, they receive five minutes. Uh, if not, we certainly will give everybody an opportunity to speak, and they would have three minutes. I do want to uh, mention tonight that um, we did have a special request uh, because we do have some members of the public uh, who are um, uh, hearing impaired, and uh, we appreciate you being here, and we, I, I certainly apologize on behalf of this council and county government uh, because we do not have an interpreter this evening. Uh, I do want you to know that the county council staff worked very diligently to attempt to have somebody uh, here tonight uh, and uh, on the notice that they had, uh, there was just nobody available. Uh, so uh, we recognize your concern. We thank you for being here uh, to bring this concern uh, further to our attention. Uh, and uh, we are working on things uh, to certainly resolve that. With that being said, uh, the members of the public who have called in to get five minutes, uh, beginning with Michelle Repman, if you're here, please come to the podium and give us your name and municipality, and I will begin your five minutes then. Did that so it would be a little easier for you to follow. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> and gave you some good reading material. Okay. Uh, my name is Michelle Rutman. I am in Washington Township in Erie County. I reside in Washington Township. Okay? Uh, good evening, Erie County Council members. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with all of you this evening. I'm here to speak about some of the facts and science behind children and masking and COVID 19, not the political science that it has become. So the first thing I wanted to talk about um, is I know you all have taken an oath of office to the Constitution. So I think that's very important when you think about what I'm talking tonight and what you decide to do. Uh, the first thing in your packets, uh, council uh, persons, is about child endangerment. And I wanted to talk a little bit about child endangerment. And I gave you the definition of child endangerment, section 4304 under Title 18 in the Pennsylvania. Okay, well. A parent, guardian, or other person supervising the welfare of a child under 18 years of age or a person that employs or supervises such a person commits an offense if he knowingly endangers the welfare of the child by violating a duty of care, protection, or support. A person commits an offense if the person is in an official capacity, prevents or interferes with the making of a report of suspected child abuse under 23 PA subsection uh, chapter 63, okay? 
and I explained a little bit more in your packet if you want to look at it. The next thing I want to discuss is the definition of child abuse as listed in the Pennsylvania Child Protected Services Law. And it's a very long ex explanation. I will let you read it at your time. But the term child abuse shall mean intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly doing any of the following. And there's many, there's six different things with many subsections. But what I'm going to do is point out number three, causing or substantially contributing to serious mental injury to a child through any act or failure to act or series of such acts or failures to act. And then subsection five is interfering with the breathing of a child. Okay, I'll let you read the rest of it yourself. I don't think I have enough time to go through everything. So the reason I'm here today is to talk about the mask mandates on the children, okay? For one thing, it's A, unconstitutional. You are violating both the First and Ninth Amendments by doing this. And as council persons, you have the obligation to correct this for the citizens of Erie County, okay? Masks are ineffective, and in many ways, they harm. Okay, it's a myth that masks prevent viruses from spreading. The overall evidence is clear. Standard cloth and surgical masks offer next to no protection against virus-sized particles or small aerosols. The size of a virus particle is much too small to be stopped by a surgical mask, cloth, or bandana. A single virus of SARS-CoV-2 is about 60 to 140 nanometers or 0.1 microns, okay? The pore, <clears throat> the pore size in a surgical mask is 200 to 1,000 times that size. Consider that the CDC website states, quote, surgical masks do not catch all harmful particles in smoke, okay? And that the size of smoke particles in a wildfire are 0.5 microns, which is five times the size of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, okay? There have been hundreds of mass studies related to influenza transmission done over several decades. It's a well-established fact that masks do not stop viruses, do not. Related to the 1918 to 1990 influenza pandemic, there was almost universal agreement among experts. The deaths were virtually never caused by the influenza virus itself, but directly from severe secondary pneumonia caused by well-known bacterial uh, pneumopathogens that colonize the upper, upper respiratory tract. Dr. Fauci and his National Institute of Health studied pandemics and epidemics and concluded, quote, the vast majority of influenza deaths resulted from secondary bacterial pneumonia. Additionally, children have been repeatedly shown not to be drivers of the, of the virus. It is well accepted that children have statistically zero chance, zero chance of dying, dying from COVID, zero. If I can make that more clear, I'll use the word zero again. The CDC shows that K through 12 mortality rate from, from or with Ms. COVID. Ruffman, yes, your five minutes have expired. Okay. Thank, thank you so much for okay. being here tonight. Next on our agenda to receive five minutes is Jill Wallace. My understanding is that Jill was unable to make it this evening, uh, but I did want to uh, call her name if she did come in to give her an opportunity to speak. Uh, so Jill Wallace. Okay, uh, then next on our agenda to receive five minutes is Lou Aliota. Uh, please uh, come to the podium and give us your name and municipality and I'll begin your time then. Thank you, Lou Elliott of Mill Creek Township. Good evening, council members, administration, students, parents, voters, taxpayers. And again, let me uh, thank you for your service uh, to our community uh, council members. Do we have a crisis in leadership and governance at all levels of government? I believe so. I ask all elected and appointed public officials, 
Did you forget your sworn oath of office? Do you know the consequences of violating the oath of office? This violation is under Title 18 USC 242, deprivation of rights under the color of law. And for each charge, it's $250,000. You have a fiduciary duty and are in the public trust not to work in concert with or be involved in or with the trespass upon guarantee and protected rights. This includes misrepresentation of facts and falsification of documents. Did you know under the present circumstances, Erie County Health Orders fit the definition of domestic terrorism? This is under 18 USC 2331 to intimidate and coerce a civilian population. Did you know that I requested under the right to know law statistics from the Department of Health and the open records officer, attorney Richard Perhax, certain statistics. He did not provide the statistics from the public documents, which was and is used to publish the graphs from the Department of Health. Why the secrecy? Did you know that as council members? I will now have to appeal Mr. Perhack's response, and that's going to cost taxpayer money, because it has to be appealed to a common pleas court. Why are these public records not available? There was an article in the Erie Times News, 924, the uh, reports of four deaths of COVID since Monday, 920. If they reported it, why can't the public receive the data sheets minus the names of the individuals? This is part of the right to know law, but that's very strange. Are there any children under 18 years of age dying from COVID-19 in Erie County? We must ask that question. 2,300 years ago, a people discovered that forcing individuals to cover their nose and mouth broke their will and individuality and depersonalized them. It made them submissive. That's why they imposed on every woman the mandatory use of fabric over their face. It was repeated in a different manner in Germany in the 1940s. Every female head was shaved. Can you remember that as a fact? in your world history class in high school. Modern psychology explains it. Without a face, we don't exist as independent beings. When a child looks in a mirror between the ages of two and five, he or she, they discover as an independent being. The mask is the beginning of the deletion and deleting that individuality. He who is the, does not know his or her history is condemned to repeat it. And here's another quote. Without freedom of thought, there can be no such thing as wisdom and no such thing as public liberty without freedom of speech. That's from one of the founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin. By the way, I believe Ms. Melissa Lyon, and you remember that, um, that headline in the Erie Times News? I believe that she has no authority to remove religious exemption. And who spoke to her or County Executive Kathy Dahlkamper and stated, Ms. Lyon received unsolicited feedback from school leadership. Who are these individuals from school leadership? Each and every public official, it's each one of us right here, you, cannot and will not usurp Mr. the Aliota. rights of our children and our grandchildren. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank I, you. Your five minutes has expired. Thank you. Uh, I reserve my right to place my comments in writing, and I will submit them uh, to council. Thank you. Okay, Have thank a good you. evening. Thank you. Uh, before I call up the next individual, uh, 
I did want to say that um, a friend had informed me uh, that using uh, the word hearing impaired is an offensive uh, term and that uh, just saying uh, uh, the deaf is the more appropriate term that you prefer to, to uh, have us use and so I apologize for that. Um, and uh, we'll call the next uh, speaker on our list uh, who is uh, Brent Davis. You will receive uh, three minutes and uh, please give us your name and municipality and we will begin that. Thanks Chairman. I'm just going to yield a little time here to this lady just due to convenience of what they've got going on. It'll make sense in a minute. Brent Davis, Mill Creek Township. Mm So I met uh, a little while ago with the members of the deaf community and it just kind of to prove this point that I was unaware even before reaching out to these folks that there's a lot of county services and things and we talk about diversity, equity and inclusion. It's clearly a demographic where a lot of these folks try to come and pay their taxes or use county services remotely even through the county and there's absolutely no way for them to coordinate to have someone there so I mean it's just upon you know it's my recommendation that council looks into maybe some kind of remote iPad translation that can be on demand then uh, I invited them to actually speak and tell you their stories we, we made it so we could have a translator here this evening so that way we can kind of hear the stories that I heard and I think it's just better that way so I appreciate you uh, taking the time and considering that so Marcia Dyer, and this is Sherpa. It's issues with the problem, and we have a hard time finding Sherpa. So we want to approve a deaf server to get a Sherpa, but we have a hard time finding because it's short if it's Sherpa. So how do we get more in Sherpa to have a Sherpa for the deaf client? And if the math is hard. It's hard to understand people talking, and you can't have a Sherpa all the time with us. So please think about that. We need more interpret. Thank you. And I want to thank the friend that came to the Deaf Club. A wonderful. It's just a wonderful guy. Thank you. Did you all get that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, Wendy Cabrera. Is Wendy here and would she like to speak? Hello, my name is Wendy. I don't know how to know the last name. Cabrera. Beginning to decide talk to um, the Erie County about the inter interpreter working, why we all have 
here know what's going on. Like we're here, we got our talk and there's no interpreter, no representative, no representative for the organization. Kelly, you help me. <laughs> okay. Get an interpreter to later. And I'm um, trying to get her job and get her job and serve, serve her server and not interpret her. And she's frustrated and trying to get her job in the post office. For 38 years, to try to aggressive to be um, working today. They, they can't go on today, but in past in 1950 to 1960, no change. The thing to see is nothing. Nothing, nothing in your heart. You're trying to encourage the interpreter up in um, <clears throat> helping improve the interpreter. And no one wants to move call for the interpreting service. Now we have a problem. Okay, thank you for listening. Now, me, I'm down. I'm Kelly. Kelly Scott, okay, please give us your your full, your, Kelly. Oh. Yeah, your, your full name and municipality, okay, okay. and I'll begin your time. My name is Kelly Scott. I'm a original from Ohio. I just moved here from Erie. Uh, okay, for my scene uh, all these years, why I have a relationship with the audience for two, years, two and a half years. And I know that the people trying to get a survey from a um, county department, like a WIC, um, the housing project, or you name it. Anything related to county, they have no interpreter. <clears throat> These people need to have a better um, communication combination need. It's like you guys you can hear and can communicate easy, but we, the deaf, we can't. Now we want to show you to understand what our need. But I'm not going to try and scare you, but we feel that basically like that this town is a violation of American Disability Act Title II. So I'm hoping and we are hoping that you can um, find, find a way to improve our communication need. It's not just anything but for the county, for the best the county. Now, I know that um, Mr. Chang, you're the sheriff, right? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I know that you came in handgun. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. Now, suppose you are talking to um, the deaf people, then how you can communicate? Does your department um, training for interpreting or the sign language? I don't know. That's the question. Suppose you win, and he win, maybe we can work together. We can do it better for this county. But remember, we are more than 90 deaf people live in this county. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Next on the agenda is Susan Beamer. Hi. Hello. My name is Susan Bender. I was born and raised in New York City. I moved to Erie County. In 1999, that my husband, Chris Ben, was born and raised here. Since I moved here, and I have noticed the deaf culture, the deaf community, always rely on ASL American Sign Language as the method of communication. You guys are hearing. You'll be able to hear the phone, able to hear the conversation, whispering. Well, we can't. You know, and they'll have the frustration is between the hearing communities and the deaf communities. 
I was told it would be cha a big change, a major change for this Erie County, but the only thing is that the Erie County only have like 500 to 900 deaf people and hard of hearing, a living here in Erie County. So I'm hoping the interpreter service will be available, like what Kelly said about the ADA law. I have noticed some, some of the people already broke the law too. So it's time for a change. Everybody has to file the ADA law for this, for the, for the interpreting services. It's the best way for a deaf community to be able to communicate with the hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other citizens that wish to be heard? Please give us your full name and municipality and I'll begin your time then. This is Freda Tepfer from Erie, Pennsylvania and until Thursday I'll be a member of the UN Relations Commission Advisory Board. I have not requested to have my appointment renewed. Um, I'm concerned about some of what I see in the proposal to amend the ordinance and the bylaws of the Human Relations Commission. The most egregious thing is in the part that talks about um, incarcerated people and the, they're proposing to change the look back time from five years to ten years over employment and housing. I think that's egregious. Um, that's number one. That should be removed. Um, I, it looks to me like there's a huge amount of power being taken from the commission and being placed in the hands of the director who also has been, his, his authority has been just between him and the county council. There's no oversight anymore by the commission as it is currently set up. Um, it would give the director a lot of discretion to decide whether thing, complaints should go forward and um, in the provisions for accountability there's accountability to the council but it doesn't there's nothing that says that they have to report on how many cases were not deemed um, eligible to be pursued further how many just how many uh, time restrictions were extended on the discretion of the uh, director and things like that. I just think there's an overwhelming amount of authority being placed in the director and I think that's, you should take a very hard look at it, whether that's appropriate. Um, the, the, the language in the, in the ordinance and the bylaws should be changed to reflect current language, current people first language the term handicap is offensive and it's obsolete and it should be struck down. There's about four or five places where it's used. Um, the advisory committee, if they have the research authority, then maybe they should be researching the time constraints. How many, um, how many cases were deemed rejected or, or deemed not, not credible by the director and how many were settled and not. Um, also, it's important that the regulations that um, under public accommodation, it's, in, it's important for the commission and the council and the director to understand and for there to be public information to this effect that public accommodation does include sidewalk access and it does include website accessibility. Um, and this is both for businesses as well as for um, state and local governments. Ms. Tepfer, your time has expired. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Are there any other citizens that wish to be heard? Are there any other citizens that wish to be heard?
Are there any other citizens that wish to be heard? Seeing none, uh, we will move on uh, with the council meeting. Uh, normally, we do not make comments after uh, the public has made their presentations, but I do want to take the opportunity as the chairman of council to make a couple comments this evening. Uh, and that is, I want to thank the people from the deaf community and the people uh, who encouraged you to come tonight. Uh, it was a very uh, sobering for myself, and I believe all of my colleagues, and the staff of council. Uh, you know, we chose a new voting system two years ago, and one of the reasons that we chose the system that we chose uh, is because it had the capability uh, to do all of the things that frankly we lack here tonight. Uh, and we're very proud of the system that we put into place and all of the research that was done to find that system. Uh, however, uh, we're not even able to communicate with you when you come in and need to express to us uh, issues that are important to you and our community. Uh, we've learned a valuable lesson. And I will uh, tell you that uh, this council has been very proactive on many fronts. Uh, the administration has put forward a diversity officer last year. Uh, and this council, although supportive, uh, wanted to see more uh, come out of just than just a diversity officer. And worked with the county executive for several months uh, to come down with a department of diversity, not just a single diversity officer. And some of the things that we suggested, which we are hoping uh, that we will be dealing with in this upcoming budget, uh, were to have uh, interpreters uh, throughout the courthouse and, and the courts uh, for not only uh, uh, those that speak several different languages uh, that we now have uh, throughout Erie County, uh, but those from the deaf community and others uh, that need these types of services. We know that this is a growing uh, need uh, in Erie County and it's not being served. Um, we are hoping through the uh, diversity department, uh, which is a department that is to be uh, created as uh, diversity, uh, inclusion, and equity. Uh, and in fact, we're going to uh, vote in such members to a commission tonight. Uh, so we, we hope, uh, even though uh, we're late uh, in doing these things, uh, that we are moving forward uh, in making sure that they happen. Uh, but again, that's no excuse for all of you this evening uh, who have come here and expressed to us uh, the needs that you have and the lack of your ability uh, to be able to achieve those services. So thank you for that. Keep our feet to the fire. Uh, keep all the county elected officials' feet to the fire. Uh, and let's move forward uh, to solve these particular items. And I would say uh, that if there are members of your group that are willing to be uh, interpreters uh, at public meetings or in the court, um, it does pay pretty good. It says here uh, $60 per hour is a minimum. So um, uh, that, that is something that uh, I think uh, we would be interested in knowing about uh, as we had a lack of uh, any list uh, to be able to call, uh, go to uh, to provide those services. So thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for the courage that you showed in uh, the sobering fact uh, that you have brought to us as members of council. Uh, with that said, let's uh, move forward with uh, the meeting. And uh, I would uh, make uh, accept a motion uh, for uh, an acceptance of the regular uh, meeting minutes for September 14th. Uh, Councilman Horton. I move the minutes from the regular meeting September 14th. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Councilman Horton 
seconded by Vice Chairwoman Clear. Are there any comments or questions from members of council? Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On approval of the minutes, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next on our agenda are reports from uh, county officials. Ms. Knight, uh, does the county executive or her designee have any report this evening? There are no reports tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that. Next on our agenda is a report from the Finance Committee. Uh, Finance Chairwoman Clear, if you could give us your report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance Committee met on Thursday, April 23rd, 2021. And the committee is submitting under old business items A, B, and C, and under new business A through G. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. I said April instead of September. We did not have a, a meeting four months ago. I would like to amend that to say we met on Thursday, September 23rd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Finance Chairwoman Clear. Uh, personnel Chairwoman uh, Mary Rennie, do you have a report this evening? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. The Personnel Committee also met on Thursday, September 23rd. There are no items for tonight's agenda from the Personnel Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Personnel Chairwoman uh, Rennie. Next on our agenda, uh, we have a, a report uh, from the uh, Rail Committee, uh, which is a committee that has put to, uh, been put together uh, as a committee of council. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rastetter, you had uh, mentioned uh, in caucus uh, that your uh, committee was not uh, ready to give a report this evening and that you would be ready uh, on October 13th. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Chairman Rastetter. My deepest apologies. Uh, thank you for your continued and diligent work and the members of your committee. Are there any other members of council that wish to give a report this evening? Seeing none, we'll continue on with uh, the old business of council. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, may we have a, a reading and title only of uh, second reading of Ordinance 74? The second reading of ordinance number 74, 2021, American Rescue Plan Act Fund revised expenditure of $3.5 million to the Erie County Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission. So moved. Second. We have a motion by uh, Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Horton. Are there any comments or questions from members of council? Just so the public is aware, under this particular ordinance, uh, we also have a companion ordinance uh, later in the meeting agenda uh, where we will be uh, seating a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion commission uh, and the members uh, of that board. Um, this is a historic moment, we believe, in Erie County, uh, and we're proud to move this forward, uh, and we're moving uh, these two ordinance ordinances together in um, uh, as uh, parallel ordinances, uh, which is why uh, we have uh, held this particular ordinance up until tonight's vote. Uh, Mr. Smith, with that said, may we have a roll call vote, please. On ordinance number 74, Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clare? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next on our agenda, we have the possible sale of a parcel from the repository. Uh, I would accept a motion to remove this from the table. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to remove item B from the table. Thank you. The motion was uh, made by Vice Chairwoman Clear seconded by Councilman Horton uh, to remove this item from the table. 
Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote on uh, that item, please? Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Mr. Smith, may, may we now have a uh, reading of the possible sale of the, this parcel from the repository? If you could give the address, please. Uh, this is identified as index number 18-052-036.0-112.00, Genesee Avenue, lot 285. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Councilwoman Showerman, seconded by Councilman Horton. Are there any comments or questions on this particular item? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. <coughs> Next on our agenda is the possible sale of a parcel in the repository. And uh, I would accept a motion to remove this from the table. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Rastetter. Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote to remove from the table this item? To remove the Fargo Street lot from the table, Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Uh, we now have the possible sale of the parcel from the repository. Uh, Mr. Smith, if you could read the address, please. This is uh, Erie County Index Number 1H-052-034.0-212.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00-112.00
amend the agenda uh, to uh, have the reading and the vote on the same night as we did with these particular items. Uh, and a resolution then uh, just has uh, one reading and a vote that same night. It's just one, one reading. Um, so we have amended our agenda and we will now uh, move forward with the agenda as amended. Mr. Smith, may we have a second reading of ordinance number 80 in its entirety, please. A second reading of ordinance number 80, 2021, appointment of members to the Erie County Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Commission, whereas on September 14, 2021, pursuant to ordinance 72, 2021, Erie County Council created and established the Erie County Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Commission, and whereas pursuant to ordinance 72, 2021, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission shall consist of nine members, two of whom shall be appointed by the county executive, and seven of whom shall be appointed by county council. And whereas each member of county council shall have one appointment, which appointment may reside outside the district to which the member of county council was elected. Now, therefore, pursuant to, Erie, to the Erie County Home Rule Charter, the Administrative Code, in Ordinance 72-2021, the district of each member of county council and the name of each member's appointment to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission are as follows. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Vice Chairwoman Clare. I would like to nominate for District 1, Daryl Thorpe. We have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Horton, for the District 1 appointee as Daryl Thorpe. Are there any comments or questions from members of Council? I would uh, just- Vice Chairwoman Clear. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for recognizing me. I just would like to uh, uh, let everyone know um, that Daryl Thorpe has uh, 20 years experience in working with diversity, equity, and inclusion um, in many different states throughout uh, the United States. He, we are very lucky to have such a member of this community um, that just happens to live in Mill Creek. So I am very pleased and honored to nominate Daryl Thorpe at, where he will be able to bring this experience um, and uh, to this community. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment of Mr. Thorpe, Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next, uh, the next. Uh, I'm going to, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Hort, could you hold one, one second? I'm, I'm going to go out of, uh, out of our normal course of business. Um, hopefully I won't regret this, but there, there seems to be a question in the audience about uh, the procedure of the agenda as I've described it moving forward. So please, yes, please go thank ahead. thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, in parliamentary procedure, uh, do you open up for, in a public meeting, do you open up for comments from the public on that particular topic before the roll call. And that's parliamentary procedure. Uh, no. Uh, at a council meeting, the time to speak on any item is during the, the citizens to be heard, at which time you, you can speak on in any item on the agenda uh, or anything you choose. If the public is not aware of the issues on the topics, what issues that is presented then in parliamentary procedure it is part of the Sunshine Act. I yeah. object to this out of order but discussion. Thank you. Um, I, I will just fi finally say that uh, all of this stuff is, uh, is sent out to the media. It's published on uh, our website and uh, it, it's all made uh, public. We have 
uh, committee meetings, finance meetings, etc. Uh, and so there's there's plenty of ample time in the Sunshine Law is being followed uh, to, to, to be able to uh, address each issue. But thank you. Uh, con continuing with uh, our uh, meeting, uh, we have the District 2 uh, nominee, uh, yeah, Councilman Horton. Sure, Mr. Chair. Uh, it gives me great honor and great pleasure to present my nominee. She's a local business owner. In fact, she owns several businesses. She's a former NAACP news president, news advisor, vice president, and president. She's done quite a few years of diversity Hi. training uh, with the Erie Police Department and other entities. And I'm pleased to present uh, this evening Ms. Tiffany Lovett as the appointment to the inaugural DEI Commission. Thank you for that motion. <coughs> I'll second it. Uh, we have a motion by uh, Councilman Horton, seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any further uh, comments or questions? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote? And if I could just uh, remind Council uh, with the members that we have in the audience this evening uh, when you speak, if you could please remember uh, to pull your mask down. Uh, and uh, everybody has agreed that that uh, is acceptable practice tonight. Uh, so thank you for that. Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment of Ms. Lavette, Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Yes. Thank you for that, Mr. Smith. Uh, next on our agenda is the appointee for District 3, Gwendolyn White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to nominate Gwendolyn White for serving on the board for racial equity um, and diversity. And uh, if I could just say a few words about her. Yeah, Mar she Mary, Mary, can I just interrupt yeah. you for one second? Sure. Um, so we, we have a council member on the phone uh, who has nominated their appointee this evening, uh, who is Gwendolyn White. Uh, she's made that motion. Um, I would ask for a second to that. And then, second. Uh, she is going to make uh, comments. Um, so we have a motion by... Councilwoman Rennie, seconded by Vice Chairwoman Clear. And uh, Councilwoman Rennie, uh, you have further comment, and please go ahead. And, and I may, I'm just going to try and keep the uh, uh, audience that's with us uh, apprised of your comments. Thank you. Um, I will try to keep it brief in that case. Uh, Gwendolyn White is an underwriting manager for Erie Insurance and she's been employed there for 36 years. Presently, she's a fellow for CEO Action with race, for racial equity for Erie Insurance. She has served on many different boards and advisory groups, uh, including the United Way, American Cancer Society, Mercy Center for Women, and so on. She has received many awards in the community. She's worked with many different organizations. She is long recognized as someone who contributes to the welfare of others and the well-being of others. Um, one award she received included Pennsylvania's Best 50 Women in Business Award. So I just wanted to make mention of that in addition to others as well. And I'm very pleased to be able to bring her name forward this evening. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Rennie uh, has put forth, as I've said, the, the name of Gwendolyn White. And she is very honored uh, to put forth her name. Uh, Gwendolyn White is an awesome person uh, and a, a very uh, 
engaged and uh, active member of our community uh, who has been uh, working at Erie Insurance and is now an underwriting manager for the last 36 years uh, and has been involved in numerous uh, organizations and boards throughout this community. Uh, and uh, uh, Councilwoman Rennie, I commend you on your appointment. Your appointment. I too believe Gwendolyn White is an awesome person. With that said, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please. On the appointment of Ms. White for District 3, Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next on our agenda, we have the appointment of the District 4 representative. Mr. Chairman? Vice Chairwoman Clear? On behalf of you, the District 4 uh, representative, I nominate David Gonzalez. I okay. move to Thank nominate. You. Thank you. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Rastetter. Are there any questions or comments from members of council? Um, I would like to make a few. Uh, I've known uh, David Gonzalez uh, well over 20 years. Uh, there's no question that he has been an active uh, member and vocal member of this community uh, where he sees uh, uh, unequal treatment uh, and lack of diversity and lack of civility and uh, lack of inclusion. Uh, he has no fear to step forward uh, and bring that to the public's attention. Uh, he served with distinction on Erie City Council and uh, served uh, with honor at the Erie Community Foundation and is now the executive director of the St. Martin Center uh, where every day uh, he fights for people in our community uh, that look to him to be a leader uh, and to make sure uh, that he uh, seeks out ways to provide the services uh, that their clients need. Uh, so I am honored uh, to put forth the name of David Gonzalez for my appointee to this historic commission tonight. Uh, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote? I want the appointment of Mr. Gonzalez to District 4. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Yeah. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next we have the appointment from the District 5 representative. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to nominate Denise Pepinicki. Thank you for that motion. I'll second. second. Uh, we have a motion by Councilman Shank, seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any comments or questions on uh, this particular appointment, Mr. Shank? I'd like to say just a few words. I'll keep it brief. Denise is someone I consider a friend, and we have known each other quite a long time. She is an attorney, and she did a, the private practice, tried the corporate lawyer thing, and didn't like it because she likes people. So she gave up her big corporate uh, lawyer job just to go back into private practice to help people. Now, I could sit up here and say wonderful things about her, but this is the text message she actually sent to me. I asked her after we swapped uh, resumes and stuff, I said, would you want to be on the board? I would actually, I'm involved in the diversity and equity and inclusion for the Bar Association, and this is one of those areas I am passionate about. Thank you for considering me. So these are my words. This is from my nominee to everybody. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Shank. Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment to District 5, Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. 
Next, we have the representative for District 6. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Rastetter. I am honored to prevent, present the uh, name of Mr. Matthew Harris, Sr. for the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Board. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by uh, Councilman Rastetter, seconded by Vice Chairwoman Clear. Are there any further comments or questions? <coughs> Mr. Rastetter? Uh, just that uh, Mr. Harris is uh, president of the All About Character Incorporated and the Char Character Be About It program. I don't know how many people have heard of that around here, but they're, they're pretty big all over the country. It's a very good program, and, and I'm honored to uh, present his name. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rastetter. Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment of Mr. Harris to District 6, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next, we have the District 7 uh, nominee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it is my honor to nominate Dr. Sarah Carter to the Commission of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Councilwoman Showerman, seconded by Vice Chairwoman Clear. Are there any members that wish to make further uh, comments? Councilwoman Showerman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dr. Sarah Carter, by profession, is a trauma surgeon. But she has spent a lot of her career focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she serves on many uh, panels and discussions, not only in the Erie area, but also um, statewide. Um, and she um, encourages people to and challenges them to interrupt their uh, passive complicity, to lead by example, and to use their pri privilege and position to put an end to racism. In her words, she is calling people to action, and the time is now. And it was, uh, I had very, a lot of talented people to talk to, but when I heard her lecture, I knew she was the right person for the position. And when she uh, called people to action, I decided I would call her and call her to action. And she very graciously accepted, and I'm, I'm proud to nominate her. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Ms. Showerman. Uh, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment of Dr. Carter to District 7, Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Uh, the county executive has uh, two appointees to the commission, uh, and uh, we will now have the county executive's uh, first appointee uh, which is in nomination. Mr. Chairman. Vice Chairwoman Clear. On behalf of the County Executive, I would like to nominate Mr. Gerald Blanks. Thank you. We have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Horton. Are there any comments or uh, further uh, questions or comments from members of Council? Um, seeing none, uh, since the county executive is not with us this evening, I am just going to make a few minutes, uh, take a few minutes uh, to mention uh, Gerald Blanks, uh, who I've known for uh, well over, well, many years, uh, actually several decades now. So uh, we try and forget about uh, th those ages. But uh, uh, Jerry Blanks uh, has been a uh, advocate uh, for. Uh, people in the black community and those that have been underserved uh, 
most of his, uh, if not his entire adult career. Um, he has uh, been a transformative figure uh, in this community with the youth, uh, particularly in the area of basketball. Uh, he's served as a coach uh, and referee uh, for uh, various youth organizations uh, throughout Erie County. Uh, and uh, he is uh, just a super guy uh, who uh, has unlimited talents uh, and energies and, and brings those uh, with him in any endeavor uh, that he is involved in on a daily basis. Uh, so I congratulate the county executive uh, for placing her nominee uh, this evening with uh, Gerald Blank. And Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the county executive appointment of Mr. Blanks, Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next, we have the county executive's uh, second appointee uh, or their nominee this evening. <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Vice Chairwoman Clear? On behalf of the county executive, I would like to nominate Dr. Adrian Dixon to the DEI board. Commission. Thank you. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any members of council that wish to make any uh, further comments or, or have any questions? Uh, seeing none, um, I will just uh, make mention of uh, Dr. Dixon, uh, who has been a longtime uh, educator uh, and leader in this community. Uh, she has uh, taken on, uh, straight on, uh, the issues of uh, racial divide and uh, the fact of lack of inclusion in this community. Uh, she has been uh, a leader. Uh, not only in her professional life, but in her personal life. Uh, and she now uh, serves, I believe the title is, as president of Sarah Reed. Uh, and uh, I commend the county executive uh, once again for uh, her second appointee, uh, who is Dr. Dixon, uh, which I know Dr. Dixon uh, will make a uh, exemplary contribution to this particular commission. Mr. Smith, with that said, May we have a roll call vote, please. On the county executive appointment of Dr. Dixon, Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. And uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, we went through that so diligently, um, I forgot whether or not we have already motioned uh, for this um, particular ordinance or whether I should ask for a motion now that the names have been uh, added to the ordinance. Uh, Councilman Horton. Thank you. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Councilman Horton, seconded by Vice Chairwoman Clear. Are there any further comments or questions from members of council? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Smith. Just one clarifying point. Uh, this vote then will be on the ordinance, including the names. It'll be a single vote passing the ordinance. Yes. Thank you. Before we take that vote, I, I just want to take a moment to congratulate all of my colleagues, the county executive, her administration, and all the people of Erie County. Uh, what we're doing here tonight, and we've said this several times before, uh, is we are moving this community forward with a vision, uh, but more importantly, we're moving it forward with unity. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are just three separate words unless we put them together 
and bring them together with unity. By the passage of this ordinance tonight and the addition of these citizens of Erie County to serve on this particular commission, we are doing just that. I'm very proud of the colleagues that I serve with on this council and very proud of the work that we do and will continue to do. Uh, we don't always get it right, but when we do, uh, we usually do a pretty good job at getting it right. We've all gone through difficult times in the last year and a half, uh, but that's just in the drop in the bucket, the difficult times that many people uh, in our country have gone through for decades, generations, and centuries. As we move this commission forward, uh, we are saying that we're ready to move forward as a community to end what has happened in the past and look to the future and look to together, uh, united as one people in this melting pot of America. With that, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Smith. May we now have a second reading of ordinance number 81? title only please a second reading of ordinance number 81 2021 30th 2021 general fund budget supplemental appropriation of fifteen thousand dollars for Hammett Foundation grant in the district attorney office so moved second. we have a motion by vice chairwoman clear seconded by councilman Horton are there any comments or questions from members of council Seeing none, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On Ordinance 81, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Smith. May we now have a first reading of ordinance number 82 in title only. A first reading of ordinance number 82, 2021, amending ordinance 45, 2018, to revise the Erie County Human Relations Commission ordinance. So moved. Oh, wait. Second. Oh. I rescind. <laughs> the first. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we, we always have to have a little humor in our meetings to, to keep all of us on our toes. So when we do a first reading, we don't do a motion or a second. Uh, we only do that when we vote. So uh, we will continue on uh, with the new business of the council. Uh, we have amended the, gen uh, the agenda to um, strike out ordinance number 83. So next will be a resolution Number 38, Mr. Smith, if we could have that in title only. <coughs> Resolution number 38, 2021, approving an agreement. No. Uh, That's okay. Resolution number 38, 2021, approving an agreement between the Erie County Department of Health and 13 Erie County School Districts to support enhanced pandemic coordination, mitigation, and education. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Rastetter. Are there any comments or questions from members of council? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Vice Chairwoman Clear. Um, I would like to, upon the um, council of our solicitor, um, I would like to make a motion to amend the work statement in this resolution and uh, it would say in the subcontractor a section um, 
right after the Erie County Department of Health, we are going to add the wording, subcontractor shall appoint its lead community health worker not later than October 10th, 2021, and notify the Erie County Health Department of Health of its appointment by October 15th, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that motion. We have a motion by uh, Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Horton. Are there any further comments or questions on the amendment? Mr. Smith, may we have a, mo a motion or a vote on the uh, motion to amend? Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Mr. Smith, may we now have a vote on Resolution 38 as amended? Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next on our agenda is the possible sale of a parcel from the repository. Mr. Smith, if you could give us the index number and the address, please. Item F on our agenda is index number 21-054-092.2. Dash zero zero one point seven eight. The address sixty six twenty one West Ridge Road, lot fourteen. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any comments or questions from members of Council? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On item F, Mrs. Rennie. Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Mr. Smith, um, we, we next have a possible sale of the parcel from the repository. If you could please read the index number and the address for us, please. Item G concerns uh, index number 18-051.001.0-121.00 at 1209 East 21st Street. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chairwoman Clear, seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any comments or questions on this item from members of Council? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On item G, Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. That concludes the business portion of our meeting tonight. I want to thank all the members of the public uh, for being here and your patience with us throughout the meeting. Uh, I would note uh, to everyone here that our next finance and personnel committee meeting is Thursday, October 7th uh, in room 114 here at the Erie County Courthouse at 4 p.m. And uh, it's also available via Zoom. And the next regularly scheduled meeting of Erie County Council is Tuesday, October 12th at 6 p.m. here in room uh, 117 of the courthouse. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We're adjourned.